ladies and gentlemen, please join to our stage here in San Marcos. Basically, the one, the only, Leonardo da Vinci. Woohoo! I've come to the conclusion that life is pretty simple. You do some stuff. Most fails. Some works. You do more of what works. If it works big, others quickly copy it. Then you do something else. <laughs> Oh, uh, the trick is the doing something else. People of accomplishment rarely sit back and let things happen to them. They go out and happen to things. What's more, they don't accept the conventional wisdom. They know real wisdom is the daughter of experience. A painter will create pictures of little merit if he takes the works of others as his standard. It's like the difference between the ant and the bee. The ant only collects matter, albeit at many times its own weight. But the bee, which gathers mere dust from flowers, transforms it into something wonderful. I learned by doing. The real world was my classroom. I roamed the countryside searching for answers to things I did not understand. One revelation always led to another. I came to see the interrelatedness of nature, of science, and of art. Per esempio, I believe painting is a science because to me, the true merit of painting lies with the exactness of reproduction. Therefore, I developed mathematical formulas to compute the relationship between the distance from the eye to the object and its size on the canvas. It uh, worked pretty well, don't you think? <laughs> The noblest pleasure is the joy of understanding. I, I came to understand that creation is more a process of building one idea atop another rather than conjuring something from absolutely nothing. I borrowed from here to build a better something over there. Da Vinci the artist taught Da Vinci the engineer. Da Vinci the architect taught Da Vinci the scientist. Learning never exhausts the mind. Ideas bounced around in my head, colliding in explosions of new ideas. I dreamed of flight. I knew that once we tasted it, we would walk the earth with our eyes turned ever skyward. But those dreams of flight began with birds. Birds fascinated me. I watched them, sketched them, borrowed ideas from them for my inventions. For you see, a bird is an instrument working according to mathematical law. Therefore, it is within the capacity of humankind to reproduce. My earliest aeronautical designs were clearly influenced by birds. These machines would use flapping wings to generate both lift and propulsion, or uh, so I thought. I contemplated the pilot being prone, standing vertically, using arms and using legs. But 
it turns out the big human is weak compared to the little bird. Human muscle power and the physical endurance pales in comparison with our winged friends. So, if going from the ground into the air would prove too difficult, I would concentrate instead on going from the air back to the ground safely. Alora, I give you the parachute. The idea of the parachute was to reduce a person's terminal velocity so as to make a long fall survivable. It's a pyramid-shaped framework and a structure was covered with cloth and would allow any man to throw himself off a great height and land without suffering any injury. But to be honest with you, I never tried it myself. I'm too old for that sort of thing. I was the father of the helicopter, well, maybe the grandfather. My aerial screw was like a giant whirling pinwheel. The blades of this helicopter were to be made out of linen. And when turned fast enough, air pressure would build up under the blades, thus forcing the flying machine into the sky. Mm. But again, human power alone was not able to generate the necessary lift. You know, the same time I was working on the Mona Lisa, 1505, I believe, was when I wrote the Codex on the Flight of Birds. This was where I saw the important relationship between the center of gravity and the center of the lifting pressure on the bird's wing. I watched how they ascended against the wind, and how, without enough propulsion, they could stall. I tried to demonstrate the relationship between the curve of the wing section and lift. And I began to realize, and I began to see that air functions very much like a fluid, a concept that would become the foundation for the science of aerodynamics. This interest in the air and the sky led me to the Evans. I was the first to suggest special glasses that would bring the moon's image down to earth. And I was the first who said, il sole non si muove, and the sun does not move. But I think someone else got credit for that one. I even designed a calculating machine. You now call them computers? <sighs> if there had been venture capital back then, I'd be bigger than Google today. Of course, I wrote all of these ideas down in my notebooks. And there they stayed. Now I'm told these notebooks of mine are worth a fortune because I am now considered to be un genio, a genius. In fatto, a fellow by the name of, come si chiama lui? Gates paid 30 million of your dollars for one of my old notebooks. Oh, where was this Gates when I was in my prime? You know, back then, just to survive, I had to go from city-state to city-state doing odd jobs. Uh, a, a fortress here, a portrait there, a city plan over there. Always doing the bidding of my benefactors, who apparently had an earth, I was a genius. Still, without them, we might still be in the dark ages. But while they knew they had been born at a crossroads in time, they didn't always choose the best road. There were so many things I wanted to do, to build, things I knew could change the world, inventions that would raise humanity to a new level. But I've come to see that there are three kinds of people. 
those who see, those who see when they are shown, and those who do not see. Sfortunatamente, this last type is by far in the majority. So, those of us who see must act because responsibility for the others rests squarely on our shoulders. <laughs> Half a millennium ago, people like you or the people like me talk about what could be. And while it did not happen in their lifetime or mine, much of what I envisioned has come to pass. But still I weep for what could have been. Because what I accomplished in life was nothing compared to what I might have accomplished. My greatest regret is that my best work is still in those notebooks. At the precise point where you place your hand in the river, you can actually feel the passage of time. Because the water you touch is both the last of what has passed and the first of what is yet to come. That is how quickly this moment will pass. Don't let opportunity pass with it. You, the people in this room, are in an extraordinary position. You have the chance to make great ideas come to life. You can happen to things. From what I have seen of your civilization, your world, you too stand at a great crossroads in time. The possibilities in front of you are, che se dici in inglese? Mind-boggling. But so are the risks. Who will decide which way you will go? Who will build the bridge between humanity and technology? In other words, if I might be so humble, where will you find your Da Vinci's? Grazie mille e buonanotte.